Come on, dogs. Come on. Come on. Very nice. All right, guys, welcome back to the bluegrass. It's a beautiful September afternoon. I'm out exercising some dogs, and we're going to go up to the Exercise Small Challenges course, and we're going to answer a question I get asked all the time, which is, hey, Stoney, what do you think about dog parks? So let's go up here right now, and uh, we'll uh, walk some dogs, and I'll tell you what I think. Okay, guys, well, the short answer to whether or not uh, I like dog parks is, of course, yes. I mean, I went to a lot of trouble. I have a dog park here, and I have a whole adventure zone farm that I take dogs to. I think the idea of dogs getting to get together and play and have a good time, and owners, other aficionados of dogs, getting to be able to go and watch dogs interact and play in a positive way, I think that's awesome. You know, I mean, I think it's super, super awesome. So I love dog parks, right? And the question really is not, Stoney, hey, do you like dog parks? What do you think about dog parks? The question is really always, what do I think about the kind of dog park that you have available where you live? Okay, well, here's what I would tell you, right? Your public dog park is exactly like any other public park that you might have. It's good or bad, depending on who shows up, right? If you go to the dog park and you see a bunch of these guys right here, you know what I'm saying? Like the ultimate dog park, you would just show up and there'd be tons of black labs because all dogs want to be labs and all labs want to be black, okay? If, if, if that's the dog park you have, then you cannot spend enough time in that dog park, right? Now, I know you don't have that dog park. So if you don't have that dog park, what are my top tips for or, uh, figuring out whether or not you should go to your dog park well uh, I kind of only have three really okay and the first one is do your research okay guys in a dog business research is king and you can't just depend on people giving you their opinions because everybody gets an opinion off of Instagram or TikTok or YouTube and they just pawn it off like it's their own I mean the dog training field is full of people who don't live with dogs and work with dogs on a regular basis giving advice okay so go do your own research go see with your own eyeballs right and when I say research I'm not talking about like just getting on the computer I'm saying get in your car drive down to your local dog park and just watch okay just watch and see when people pull up in their cars and they get out do they look like the kind of people you would normally hang out with okay if the answer to that is yes okay then get out of your car and go in the dog park and make some new friends yourself Okay. Come on, dog. Now, I know that's hard. I know, you know, we've been like in the COVID world, uh, like people kind of lost sight of the importance of forming actual physical relationships with people, right? And it's really hard for people and it's really hard for dogs now. But if you want to be successful, guys, you got to get out and you got to start living, okay? Because ultimately you're responsible for modeling the behavior you would like for your puppy to see. If you go to the dog park and you haven't properly socialized yourself to your own peer group, and the types of dogs and the type of interactions you're going to see in a public dog park, then you're going to be nervous. Maybe you're going to be a little bit of a wallflower. And if you're a nervous wallflower, okay, that's what you're going to model for your dog. And here's the truth. When you go to the public park and you take a nervous dog, it draws attention and it doesn't draw the kind of attention that you're going to like. So a nervous owner with a nervous dog is nothing but trouble at a dog park, right? Okay, so do your research, right? And don't stop at like internet research. Don't stop at driving to the dog park. I want you to get out and do personal research. Find out if the people that hang out at your dog uh, park are the kind of people that you can relate to, the kind of people that you can talk to, and the kind of people you wouldn't mind being around if uh, something kind of went wrong because things go wrong at dog parks all the time, right? Socialize yourself, right? So that when you go, come back to the dog park and you say, hey, come on, like this little dog's name is Molly. I say, hey, Molly, come on. She says, well, there's Tony, there's a big scary Rottweiler up there. I don't know if I want to go up there. I say, look, this dog's name's Max. Max, an awesome dude. I met him last week and he's really fun to be around. Okay, so I model the behavior I want, I want to see from Molly, and when I model that behavior, she gives Max a chance, and Max likes her because she's being confident and she's being outgoing. I like Max's owner. It's just a win-win situation when you do your research and you socialize yourself first. Now, the second bit of advice I would give you, okay, because here's what will happen sometimes when I give that research advice, is people will get in their cars and they'll go to the dog park, and like they won't see the kind of people that uh, they would normally hang out with getting in and out of their cars, okay? Well, here's what my default position is on that. Get up earlier, okay? 
Like, if you ever have to go to a bad neighborhood or if you grew up in a bad neighborhood like I do, then you know the key to traversing bad neighborhoods is to get up early because bad people stay up late and they get up late, right? And that's just so, so simple. It's such a common sense thing that, you know, sometimes I forget that, that not everybody, you know, grew up the way I did, so they don't have common sense, okay? But just trust me when I tell you that. Bad people stay up late and they get up late. So guess when they get to the dog park? They get to the dog park late. The proactive people, the people that get things done during the day, they get up early and they get their dog exercise because they know that a tired dog is a good dog. It sets them up for success and that's the kind of people that you want to be around as a person. That's the kind of people and dogs you want to put your puppy around. You want to put them around the early risers, the ones that get up and put that work in every single day, okay? And then like, so if you get up early and you find a little bit better peer group, which is probably going to happen, and you go in there and you start making friends, guys, this is the reason that you need friends, because you need to squad up, okay? And what I mean is when I say you need to squad up and roll deep is you need to know that when you agree to go to the dog park with your friends, y'all are gonna show up, okay? You're gonna come through the gates and you're gonna have enough people and dogs with you that you're a social force in and of yourself, right? Come on, babies, you can do it. Okay. When you go to the dog park and it's just you and your dog and there's other people that are hanging out there all the time, they kind of click up and a lot of times if they have dogs that kind of misbehave or are rough or whatever, like they kind of make excuses for each other, right? And you don't want to hang around those people and you do not want to be victimized by those kind of people and you do not want your dog to be victimized by those people. You want to be around people that hold you to a high standard and hold your dog to a high standard, right? Okay, because those people are modeling the kind of behavior, right? That you would like to see from other people in the dog park. So it becomes like super important for you to join in and model also, right? We're modeling behavior for other people that, uh, um, go to the park and we're modeling behavior for other dogs that go to the park and when you roll into a dog park five deep five good people and five dogs okay you're almost always going to have a good experience right if you're just there by yourself and you're nervous and your dog's nervous then you're going to get picked on dogs are going to get picked on it's going to be you know it's going to be the kind of stuff that you hear about uh, on on youtube and instagram you know but if you're rolling five deep Ain't too many people coming up to a group of five, right, and start in trouble. And there are not too many dogs that are going to come up to a group of five well-socialized dogs and, stop, and start trouble because dogs kind of put out a vibe that, uh, you know, uh, becomes dominant based on numbers. So if you take like a dog that's not the best socialized or not the most friendly dog and you put them around a core group of really good mentor dogs, that dog's going to, he's going to elevate to their level. If you take a really well socialized nice dog and you put it around a group of five thugs, well then your well socialized nice dog, it's going to go the other direction. Okay, so that's my, that's my, that's my take on uh, dog parks, you know, do your research, get up early and roll deep. Right? If you do that, you're almost guaranteed to have success at dog parks. All right, so I'll see you guys next week, and uh, maybe I'll answer another question.